For most of Americans, the holiday and Thanksgiving involve turkey roasting, and a lot of holiday turkey recipes recommend brining your turkey before roasting it. And according to conventional wisdom and most of the recipe online, the process of brining will make your turkey juicier. I was suspicious about it a while ago when I first attempted to roast a turkey because while well, those recipes on the website did their best try to explain the science behind brining your turkey or chicken before roasting, most of them are not very convincing. For example, an article published on the BruceEat.com titled Brining Poetry for Flavor and Tenderness said the following, which I don't believe is true. Quote, when you place meat in the brine that has more salt than meat, the liquid will flow through the cell wall into the meat, which add moisture. Unquote. Well, if you did pay attention to your middle class science class, you know the above quote is totally wrong. So just a reminder of the concept of a tenacity. Salt water you use to brine your bird is typically considered a hypotonic solution because it has a greater concentration of salute than the liquid found in the cell. When a cell is immersed in a hypertonic solution, osmotic pressure tends to force water to flow out of the cell instead of being forced water into the cell. What theoretically will happen is actually completely the opposite of what the article described. So is brining a turkey actually worth the effort? Let's find out with BAA. Hello, welcome to What People Also Ask, where I search something seemingly obvious and share with you some of its part, aka People Also Ask, which is the feature telling you what other people are searching on Google that relate to your query. Today's query is, what is the science behind brining a turkey? In today's episode, we will explore the following question with PAAs. 1. Is brining a turkey worth the effort? Does it actually like do anything? 2. If brining actually work, what's the science behind brining the turkey or chicken? So. Is brining turkey worth the effort? I found the article answered this question very well, titled The Actual Reason to Brine Your Turkey is Not Osmosis, published by me. So according to my article, brining actually makes your poultry juicier and more tender according to studies. A research conducted by a researcher at the University of Florida published in 1978 on poultry science applied three different treatments to broiler meat. 1. Marinating in water 2. Marinating in salted brine 3. No marinating After cooking, the meat samples were evaluated for flavor, tenderness, and juiciness by a test panel. The result? While all of them were scored flavorably for flavor, tenderness, and juiciness, samples marinated in salted brine received higher scores than the other two. And according to them, the meat brine in salt water had significantly higher moisture content, and lower shear force values, which is a fancy way to say it's more tender, than meat marinated in water or meat that went through no marinating process. Another research published in 1979 in the same journal also found that salted brine chicken lost significantly less water during the first 24 hours post-treatment when compared to chicken marinated in water. Since all of those research is done on chicken, I also did a simple experiment on turkey the other day, and I actually can confirm that uh, it's a real thing. And the brine turkey does taste significantly more tender and it's juicier. So let's lead to our next question. What is the science behind brining a turkey? This question is answered by the affirmation article and another article titled The Right Way to Brine Turkey, published on Serious Eat, written by Zhen Kenji Lopezo who is the author of the book The Food Lab, Better Home Cooking Through Science, which is a very interesting book published in 2015, where Lopezo used the scientific method in the cookbook to improve popular American recipe and to explain the science behind cooking. Both articles debunked the osmosis theories of brining, as we discussed at the beginning of the videos. According to Lopezo, the osmosis theory is in fact incorrect. If that were true, then soaking a turkey in pure unsalted water should be more effective than brining it in salt water, which we have already established is not true. To understand what is actually going on, we should examine the structure of turkey muscles. Muscles are made up of long bundle fibers, each one housed in a tough protein sheath. As turkey heat, the protein that made up the sheath will contract. This causes juice to be driven out of the meat, similar to when you squeeze a tube of toothpaste. Heat then much higher than 150 Fahrenheit, 66 degrees Celsius, you will get dry, stingy meat. Salt reduces muscle shrinkage by dissolving part of the muscle protein, mainly myosin. 
the muscle fiber relax, allowing them to absorb more moisture and, more importantly, not tighten as much when cooking, ensuring that more of the moisture remains in place as the turkey cooks. This series is supported by research published in Food Research International in 2005, conducted by researchers at the University of Kentucky. The researchers applied salt water brining treatment on chicken and pork and found that brining produced an expansion of the myofibrils, which are rod-like units of muscle cells, resulting in substantial swelling of muscle fiber and enhanced water uptake and immobilization. Finally, brining seems to work better on chicken breast compared to drumstick. A research published in the Journal of Science of Food and Agriculture in 2000 conducted by researchers at the University of Kentucky and Kentucky State University found that in some cases, after brining treatment, chicken pectoralis major, which I believe is a fancy way to say chicken breast, seems to have more structural change and is more extractable than chicken gastrocnemius, which I believe it means drumsticks. The researchers then imply that this might explain the different water imbibing ability of white and red meat when processed with salt. Which is great, because in my opinion, white meat definitely need more tendering up treatment than red meat. So how do you think? Do you brine your chicken or turkey before cooking it? What is the optimal concentration of brine when it comes to brining your chicken or turkey? So if you made it to the end of the video, chances are that you enjoy learning what people also ask on Google. But let's face it, reading PAA yourself will be a pain. So here's the deal, I will do the reading for you and upload a video compiling some fun PAA once a week. All you have to do is to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you won't miss any PAA report that I compile. So just do it right now.